Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are in the shop today and what we'll be working on today is the motor yet again. Now today's video might be kind of jumbled in the mixture of videos we've got because we're gonna have cylinder head video, camshaft video, assembling the bottom end, assembling the top end. So this kind of fits somewhere in between, but today what we're specifically gonna be working on is actually the top end and drilling out all of these studs for a half inch head stud. You guys might be wondering, well, how are you gonna do that? Well, I actually teamed up with Tick Performance. I joined their, not sponsorship, but like their Team Tick package. And I think it was like 20 bucks, you get a hat, a shirt, some stickers, but it also gets you a discount on all of your orders. Like, you know, some of the partnerships they have, some of their own equipment, some of their own tools, you know, you, can, you guys can actually go ahead and buy that and get a discount. So as you guys can see, we got a bunch of stickers with the uh, Team Tick package, I also got a hat. And what you guys can see behind this, this is the head stud drilling plate. And so what we're doing is cleaning up the motor, sealing it up, because we don't want any chips to get inside the motor, and then using that plate to drill out the holes from the stock size to a half inch. Now the reason we're doing that is because, as you guys know, we've got the LS9-2650, it's from Kong Performance. You guys know that that thing can make a bunch of horsepower. I've seen cars make up to 1300 horsepower. We're not aiming for anywhere near that, but with the forged bottom end, we've got the forged pistons, the forged rods. I would like to be able to take advantage of all that power that we can make. And so how we're gonna do that is we're gonna do half inch head studs, LS9 head gaskets, then on the cylinder heads, when I get them back from the machine shop, we'll have to drill those out for the half inch head stud as well. So. This drill plate we'll be able to use on the block and a cylinder head, like I said, but today is just gonna be the block. We'll include that cylinder head footage when we film that. So, but yeah, so basically what we gotta do today is get this new engine sealed up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish cleaning out the oil pan. You guys can see it's drying, well, it's been drying for a few days there. Put the oil pan on, I'm gonna put the front and rear covers on, and then cover everything else with masking tape. I know you could do this kit, with it installed in the car so if you ha you wouldn't have as much stuff opened up as we do you can do this before you machine the block you can do this after you machine the block that's kind of where we're at so we're at the the, the block spin machine the rotating assembly is all in there so basically you just have to take some precautions with tape putting covers back on etc just because like i said you just basically want to make sure nothing gets inside that engine all right guys you can see that i have plugged up pretty much every hole we got the rear cover on, I got the oil pan on, I covered up all the sensors, we covered up the dipstick like we pointed out earlier. There's the gap around the crank pulley, fill that in with tape, plugged up the coolant passages here. And I think we're pretty much ready to go. All we gotta do is grab the torque plate. There are some guides we gotta put in here and we should be able to get started. So we put the little guides in, now we're gonna put the drilling fixture on and go from there. All right, so the guide plate slid right on. I've put a piece of tape over here behind it. What I'm gonna do is basically put a piece of tape on top then put a piece of tape on the engine lift plate because for some reason this masking tape does not wanna stick to this block, even though I guess there's a little bit of oil on it. it it's just not wanting it to stick. So like I said, we're trying to cover up as much stuff as we can, protect as much stuff as we can. So you guys can see that gap right there. We're definitely gonna have to tape that over and make sure nothing gets down into the cylinder. I have put the plate on, I've torqued it down. I just used my little stubby impact right here, put that on setting to tighten it down. It's all good to go. You guys can see we've taped everything off, trying to prevent any, you know, fillings getting into the motor. On the other side, I didn't really feel like taping it all up, so all I did was take a piece of paper, put holes in it for the head bolts, taped it off up top, taped it off on the sides, and it should be good to go. And also I taped off the bolt holes because we do have the bolt holes going through the paper. So I think we should be good to go. And uh, what we need to do to start this is actually measure the counter bore. We also need to measure the depth of the threads and then we can go ahead and get started. So you guys can see I put the bolts all on the outside. So we're gonna start in the six bolts in the middle. And then when we're done here, we'll take these spacers and we'll grab our half inch studs. Then I'll put them on the inner four, so here and here, and then we'll move the fixture and everything and start drilling on the outside bolts. All right, so to start this, we need to measure the counter bore. That's basically where the 
you know, it's bored and then the thread starts. So we want to measure, if you guys can see, it's the outside of the hole. All right, so I measured the outside of that. That was about 1.1 and we're going to add an inch and a half. So 1.5 inches to that. So 1.1 plus 1.5 is going to be 2.6. So that's going to be for the counter bore. And the next step what we're going to want to do is actually measure the bottom of the hole, but not the center. You want to measure the outside of it. So, all right, so I just measured, it was about 2.72. Again, we're going to add another 1.5. So, all right guys, so here's kind of an order of operations. You're going to drill the hole first with the counter bore. That's going to be the 2.6 inches. We'll have to mark that on the bit. Your second step of operations is going to be drill out the current threads and that's the 2764 drill bit and if you guys look it says it on here on the fixture it also says it on the drill bit for that 2764 we're going to measure 4.22 inches and then your third and final step this is going to be the tap and actually the way this works is the tap will go inside the fixture then you'll put the fixture inside the thing and the tap will just go all the way down to the bottoms out so counter bore Drill out the threads, tap it.
All right, guys, we just finished drilling out the counterbore. We just finished drilling out the threads as well. Now we're going to be using the tap that was provided. Now, if you guys watch the video from Tick, they do show you they have this Lyle um, tap socket set, I guess is what they call it. And uh, I bought this a long time ago for a different project. But basically what you have is you have that square bit goes into this socket. And this allows you to use the standard 3 8 ratchet. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. So, and the other thing you need to remember before you put this tap into the block or the tool, you need to put the fixture on it. So what you're gonna do is put the fixture on it, put it into the block, and now we can go ahead and start tapping it. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the hardware that holds the fixture against the drill plate. And that's just so that we're consistent. You don't want this tool loosening up. You don't want it going the wrong way. And um, yeah, so I think basically just Tighten it down until uh, we get to the bottom of the block. And from the video, it said that we don't have to back it out because the way this tap is designed, it's designed to bring the chips up, you know, because it's some kind of spiral flute design or whatever. So this is going to be quite tenuous at best. So uh, let me go ahead and tap all these holes. I think this will take a long time. I don't want to use a electric ratchet on this. You could, but I'm not going to. I just want to do this by hand. And uh, I may actually switch over to a half inch drive um, just because, actually, yeah, there you go. So we just reached the bottom of the block. I'm gonna back it off. Yeah, they said you might have to back it off, drive it forward, then back it off again. There you go. And, uh, yeah, that should be tapped. Obviously, you know, we're going to have to clean out the bore again. Uh, all right, let's take the fixture off. The tool for the fixture. And, yeah, I think I am going to switch over to half-inch drive just because this, uh, this is going to take a while and that 3 8 drive sucks. <laughs> so... All right, we should see a bunch of, uh, yeah, there you go. See, see a bunch of shavings, shaking it off into the drip pan. And uh, we'll have to blow this out. And uh, guys, do remember, we are actually gonna have to use these four holes, these outer holes that we're tapping right now. We're gonna have to use that to tighten this plate back down and do, then do the outer four holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this off screen because you guys have already seen me jump around in time lapse. We're gonna tap these six holes. We'll drill counter bore, drill the threads out, and then get the threads done on the outer, and we'll be done with the passenger side of this block. All right, guys, you'll see that we have the outer bolts off. So basically all we're gonna do, start all over again with these outside bolts and do the counter bore, drill out the threads, tap it, clean it, and then put your studs in. You guys can see we got the four outer studs. I also put the inner studs in because why not? So yeah, let's go ahead and finish this up. I'll finish this side and we'll show you the finished product. All right, guys, you can see we have all the studs in. Now we're actually ready to take the plate off the passenger side, but I am going to blow off the whole motor because like I said, I don't want anything falling in. And I mean, I've got all the critical pieces taped off, but again, you know, you don't want anything in the motor and I don't really want to be cleaning this thing up. So all right, guys, I think we managed to Avoid any major chunks going down the motor. You know, we had that plate on here that was all tightened down. We had the tape behind it. I just took the plate off. And I pretty much think we're good to go. I haven't seen any major flakes, any big chunks or anything like that. So yeah, this side is pretty much done. All right, guys, we've just finished up the other side with the head stall install. You guys will see that we have the passenger side fully installed. We have the driver's side fully installed. Yeah, guys, I've actually been out here for a solid three or four hours, so this is quite an involved process because basically there's 10 holes per side and you have to drill each hole three times. So that's 30 holes on one side. You'd, you'd be drilling, tapping, all that. And then the same with the other side. So that's another 30. So in total, you'll be going through this process three times for 60 holes. So that's kind of insane, but that's what you get for not going to the machine shop and doing the work yourself. So we are one step closer to having a, I'm going to call, not call it bulletproof, but 
a very stout bottom end. You know, we've got the forged pistons, we've got the forged rods. Now we've got half inch studs. We're gonna have LS9 head gaskets. Oh, and one more thing, you will notice that I put the front cover, the oil pan and the back cover on. I only did that just to cover up the motor, just to kind of seal it up. So those are temporary. I actually have a brand new front cover. I have a brand new rear cover. I have a brand new oil pan gasket to put on. That's kind of next. But of course, as we said in the previous video, we have to wait for that camshaft. So hopefully cylinder heads next week. The following week, hopefully we'll get our camshaft. And uh, yeah, we'll just be that much closer to getting this engine back together and then we can throw it back in the car. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you guys wanna see those next videos, the cylinder head, putting the bottom end together, putting the cam in, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. And if you guys wanna help support the channel, make sure you check out the links down below. I'll try to include links to everything that we use. And also make sure you go check out Tick Performance because they do sell a lot of LS parts. Actually, a bunch of the parts I've been ordering recently have come from them. So make sure you go check them out. Like I said, you know, they've got this whole drilling fixture, these head studs. This was a really good kit. And they also have that Team Tick discount, if that's what you want to call it, and uh, go from there. Oh, also, if you guys want to help support our channel, go check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. So thanks, guys. Have a great one.